the Global Media Education Council is extremely overjoyed to confer eminent media educator uh, honors. Uh, I don't want to use the word award and reward, things like that, but honors to Dr. Charbak. Dr. Charbak, who has been representing the voice of the voiceless many a time through his words, writing, television programs, and various other ways, in, in, in various other ways, even through applied research at the grassroots in the Northeastern part of India, who has been working and even helping several non-government bodies, trade unions, and many other organizations to voice their justified demands and issues in a forceful manner through media and beyond media. I re we really are honored to have you amidst us and uh, we would like to uh, confer this honors of eminent media educator to today evening, this evening. 75 evenings, 75 media educators we are saluting, rejoicing, celebrating their work. And today is Dr. Charva. Can I request the host to play the small confirmant video? Through this virtual medium, we pay our honors, our respect to you, and a framed certificate signed by the 10 vice presidents from six countries of the world who are GMAC vice presidents, and our overall president, Professor KG Suresh, and myself as secretary. This will come to you by courier along with the memento. Uh, over to you, Dr. Charvak, to give your acceptance speech and also speak about democracy and media, the issues of the moment. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Ujjal Kumar Choudhury. Uh, I don't call him UKC, we call Ujjal uh, Respected Chair of the session, Dr. Ruchi Khair Jaggi. Respected Chief Guest, Dr. CK Mathu. Uh, keynote Speaker, Dr. Dhiman Chattopadhyay. Our dear moderator, Dr. Avasti other speakers of this 25th session of uh, GCEC, our friend uh, Dr. Gigi Joseph, and all other participants of this Global Communication Education Conclave webinar on media and democracy challenges and opportunity. Uh, I am sort of speechless uh, by the confirmation of the honors which uh, you arranged. I had no preparation, psychological or anything for this. I'm really uh, speechless for that. Uh, thank you, thank you. That's all I can say. In fact, uh, whatever I am saying now, I don't know because everything is in sort of stumbles. Uh, I uh, request you to kindly allow me to dedicate this, uh, whatever I would say, it might be disorganized, but uh, whatever I would say before this distinguished audience, uh, to dedicate this to a young journalist, around this place where I walk, who was perhaps going to jail last week on some pretext for writing a piece of editorial this month. Now, <clears throat> some of us may know his name because that issue had come up in some media. Uh, some of us may find it out later, but the name is not really important. I'm privileged to get the context of this session from his actions and more importantly, from people's reaction about this whole episode against what I can say as organized preparation to teach a journalist a lesson. Now, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and I am not that sorry because already Dr. C.K. Matthew had really done justice to the issue an academic could have done. So had I been 
giving an address formally on the issue, that would have been a repetition. Whatever Dr. Sikamathu has presented, after that, there is very little, practically nothing to say on the issue at hand. But uh, I can only uh, reflect on whatever I see, perhaps not as a media educator, not as a former journalist, but just as a layman, as a citizen of this country, as a citizen of the world. Now, that was the main point for discussion here, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to teach that attitude, to teach them a lesson, because they exercise their freedom of speech on some issue. And even that issue is not important here, that attitude of teaching a lesson to a journalist is the focus here, as we gather here to discuss media and democracy, challenges and opportunity, and my topic becomes media, democracy, and freedom, what is written on the wall. We know that democracy uh, as the rule of majority was not exactly the idea preferred by many thinkers like say Socrates, Plato, and so on. Yet most of the modern world swear by democracy, just like Abraham Lincoln, this nation, he said, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth in 1863. Now, just as robust the idea of democracy may sound apparently, its real face gets that much complicated in real world. How it deals with media and how media engages with democracy are only few of the certain issues that continues to grapple us for the last seven and a half decades. In the Indian context, it was relatively easy during the colonial period. Mahatma Gandhi had his own vision of democracy, which he termed as Saraj, where the people will be self-reliant. Now, in order to achieve that, he had, among many other things, also took up journalism as one of his weapons. He was ready to face charges of sedition for his journalism. Now, as we are observing the 75th year of the independence from British colonial power as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, uh, Dr. Matthew had recalled that occasion. We must also recall that the credit for the hard armed political independence of India goes to the fearless patriots like Gandhi and Subhas Bose alike, not to forget Binoy Badul Dinesh, Master Dashudja Shen, Pitila Tawadadar, or Bhagat Singh, Ramprashad Bismil, and Aswakullah Khan, and millions unknown like them, who were the common people whose names have not been written in any copa plate. Now, journalism played an important role in their struggle for establishing democracy, replacing the colonial rule in India. And there is little ambiguity on the role of journalism and our struggle for freedom are for our democratic country and the impact of that struggle on Indian journalism prior to 1947. Now, thereafter, for quite some time, a free flow of information was much talked about in the post-1947 era as a basic requisite of an informed democratic society. Now, when we say free flow of information, that also includes the concepts of freedom of getting information. I'm not, I don't have the time also to delve into detail in, into all these issues, but students of journalism, a lot of students are also here. They would be, uh, they would perhaps like to get details of these issues, whatever we mention here. Now, ownership pattern of media, uh, which also was mentioned by Dr. C.K. Mathu, came to be one of the most important hindrance here. Apart from the international imbalance in deciding what information will flow, to which direction, to what extent, uh, framing and priming in the name of constructive or ulterior criticism, hidden agendas, corporate ownership, media political lectures, all these are proved to be some important deterrents to this free flow. Now, even if that free flow has been more a conceptual uh, notion than a potential reality, a media system free from all sorts of interferences and subtle or open pressure on media has always remained an undeniable relay. More so in today's uh, kind of situation where Everybody is, is uh, very, very uh, in the hobby of lodging an FIR against some journalist or other. Now, freedom of speech remained as mythical as the proverbial Euclidean point, which does not have any dimension, yet it exists. 
and creates further shapes when it starts moving. No democracy can thrive without a media which has the freedom to criticize and uphold the most unpalatable truths. Now, contextually, a point arises that constitution guarantees freedom of the expression, but doesn't give freedom after the expression. <laughs> freedom of speech with responsibility is another approach of evaluating this democratic environment. Uh, Dr. Matthew has talked uh, quite a lot about this. However, ultimately, the power who takes the decision on what is responsible and what is irresponsible, uh, that decides the amount of freedom a journalist would enjoy. The CPJ, Committee to Protect Journalists, that reports today on 9th of uh, December 2021, that the number of journalists jailed around the world set another record in 2021. Invoking new tech and security laws, repressive regimes from Asia to Europe, from Africa, cracked down harshly on the independent press. CPJ's 2021 prison census found that the number of reporters jailed for their work hit a new global record of 293, up from a revised total of 280 in 2020. At least 24 journalists were killed because of their coverage so far this year. 18 others died in circumstances too murky to determine whether they were specific targets or not. Now, the Reuters journalist duo, who had uncovered the heinous acts of the Myanmar military in the Rakhine state, they were arrested under the official secret act of colonial era. Now, some or other modern remnants of this particular official secret act of 1923 and sedition acts are widely used against the journalists in many countries of entire Southeast Asia. Uh, I am not ready to take the liberty of mentioning specific countries for reasons quite understandable to all of you. The message that that, that is generated from such attacks on media uh, is that independent or critical journalism is not safe at all. This creates a climate of palpable fear that leads to extreme self-censorship or journalists adapting a new value system of uh, fit to stay alive within this troubled waters of our time and space. Now in the press freedom index reported by the reporters without borders, India is now ranked 142, same as last year, after it consistently slid down from 136 in 2016. In South Asian neighborhood, Nepal is at 106, Sri Lanka is at 127, Myanmar prior to the coup was at uh, 140 and Pakistan is at 145 and Bangladesh is at 152. On the larger Asia Pacific region, instead of drafting new repressive laws for imposing censorship, several countries have chosen to apply existing legislation that was already very draconian, for example, laws on sedition, state secrets, national security and so on. Now, there is no shortage of pretext to use these laws. The strategy for suppressing information is often uh, manifold. One, for one, government can use innovative practices often derived from marketing uh, to impose their narrative within the mainstream media, whose publishers are uh, from the same elite as the politicians are. And second, uh, politicians and activists, they wage a merciless war on several fronts, particularly on the digital front, against reporters and media outlets and don't, who don't tell the official line, and then uh, take the action of uh, lodging FIR complaint to state, and then the rest of the action is taken on behalf of the state. Now, earlier this year, in an annual report on global political rights and liberties, US-based nonprofit Freedom House downgraded India from a free democracy to a partially free democracy. All these are certain things which should be very, very alarming for all of us. Sweden-based VDEM Institute was harsher in its latest report on democracy. It said India had become an electoral autocracy. And last month, India described as a India was described as a flawed democracy, slipped two places to 53rd position in the latest democracy index published by Economist uh, Intelligence Unit. Now, the report also said that Asia Pacific's authoritarian regimes have used the COVID-19 pandemic to perfect their methods of totalitarian control of information, 
which was briefly mentioned by C.K. Matthew sir today in his speech. While the dictatorial democracies have used it as a pretext for imposing specially repressive legislation with provisions combining propaganda and suppression of dissent. There is much discourse available what democracy means or uh, what should be the interplay between media and democracy. But according to the Commissioner for Human Rights, certain steps are crucial to ensure media continuing its play uh, uh, to, uh, to play the role of watchdog in democracy. First of all, all governments have to break out of the state of denial behind which they hide the problems faced by the press. Acknowledging the critical situation is a precondition for any solution. One urgent step is to free all journalists imprisoned because of these views they have expressed and to clear the criminal record of those who have been condemned for their reports. It's also particularly important to eradicate impunity by effectively investigating all cases of violence and harassments against journalists, including those involving state actors such as law enforcement officials. Such a move should be reinforced by specific instructions and trainings for the police on the protection of, for the protection of journalists. In addition, legislations may change, must change. Defamation and libel must be fully decriminalized and dealt with uh, by uh, proportionate civil sanctions only. Moreover, anti-terror and national security or sedition related laws should not unduly interfere with the right of the press to impart information of public interest and the right of people to receive it. Uh, right and left uh, complaining uh, FIR lodging uh, against press on sedition issues, they should have a blanket ban from Supreme Court so as uh, people can't really take advantage of these rules against the press. Now, if the press would like to remain free from undue state or political interference, it has to produce the necessary antidotes to media abuse itself, in particular concerning hate speech and violation of privacy. Adequate public resources should also be guaranteed to support media outlets without compromising editorial independence and transparent regulations on media ownership. In order to get there, a kind of self-regulatory and professional federative bodies can be created by the journalists to affirm the different codes of conduct established in different countries. I think if we cannot embark on such path, journalists will face even more severe situation in near future. The global system is evolving into a combination of more totalitarian regimes than before, than ever before. And uh, through the defeat of uh, Donald Trump in US, uh, it could be termed as a temporary relief in this process, but other indications throughout the globe are not all very positive. The record number of journalists getting jailed around the world in 2021, which I referred in the beginning, uh, that itself is a proof of that. In fact, the increasing number of journalists getting harassed, that's an indicator that the media is resisting or at least trying to break free the authoritarian attempt to silence them. In a way, increasing hardship on media persons is also a positive sign of resistance to authoritarianism, which sometimes make me hopeful for a better future. What we require is people's awareness and involvement on this issue of media democracy and freedom. It's my experience also, when people came out on road, they didn't care for 144, and then the state itself always they restrict itself from taking further action against media. Only awareness and resistance from people can guard the freedom of speech for the media, which in turn can guard the freedom of the people at large. So that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you all for the great honor bestowed on me 